In this video, we're going to cover how to create and set up a .NET Core 2.1 application. We will set up a demo inventory application that will have a post allowing us to add items to our inventory store and a get that will allow us to get items from our inventory store. While creating this demo application, we will talk about some of the new features in .NET Core 2.1 such as setting compatibility versions, HTTPS by default, and returning a specific model in our controllers. Let's get started. Okay, so let's start off by creating a new project. We'll head up to File, New Project, and we're going to select the ASP.NET Core Web Application. We're going to call this Inventory Service. Select OK, and we're going to create an empty template. Really important to note here that we have the ASP.NET Core 2.1 version selected up here. Select OK, and we'll head along to Startup. Okay, first thing we're going to add is our MVC pipeline. So we're going to say services.addMVC. And we're also going to add a compatibility version, which is new to 2.1. Let's add that, and then I'll explain what it does. So set compatibility version, and we'll set that to 2.1. Tidy that up. So Microsoft needed a way to improve its framework code without making it too hard for developers to upgrade to the latest version. Unlike most other parts of ASP.NET Core, MVC is a framework. Their code calls your code in lots of idiosyntactic ways. If they change what methods are called, or in what order, or how exceptions are handled, it's very easy for your working code to become not working code. This is where this line comes into play. This allows Microsoft to make changes to the framework code while allowing developers to set a compatibility version. In our case, we're setting it to 2.1. And we'll head along to configure now. And we're going to add an else. And we're going to say app.useHSTS. And let me add the rest of the pipeline. And then I will come back and I'll explain what HSTS is. So we'll say app.useHTTPS redirect, which is new to 2.1 as well. And finally, we'll say app use MVC. Okay, so heading back to what HSTS is. HTTPS is on by default, even in development mode. We're given HTTPS redirect middleware and HTTP strict transport security, which is HSTS. It allows the ability to force the browser to only be accessed over HTTPS. There's been a big push lately about making sure that everyone's web pages are HTTPS. And so Microsoft in their latest 2.1 release have really helped towards making that happen. Use HSTS is only used in prod. The server tells the browser that you should enforce HTTPS. No requests should come through as HTTP. The browser will enforce that from the client side. And the use HTTPS redirect this handles bouncing HTTP requests to the HTTPS endpoint. It is intelligent, meaning that it knows what ports Kestrel is listening on. Okay, so that should be our startup file. Let's head along and start creating our controller. So we're going to right click on our project and we'll say add folder. And we'll call that controllers. We'll add a controller to that. And we're going to call it Inventory Controller. I'll just change the default route up the top here to be V1. And we're going to create our first method. This is going to return an action result. And we're going to be adding items to our inventory. So we'll say Add Inventory Items. And we'll return OK. Let's decorate this with an HTTP post. OK, so here's where a bit more of 2.1 action comes into play. Previously, we would return an I action result, like so. But now we're allowed to return an action result and pass in a type of our choosing. So in this case, we're going to return an inventory items model. 
We don't have that created at the moment, so let's go along and create that. So we'll just create a folder first called models, and now we'll put a class in there. And we'll call that inventory items. In a model, let's create a few properties. First one is going to be an ID. Second is going to be the item name. Third and finally is going to be a double and it's going to be the price. Let's head back to our controllers. Now it's asking us to import our reference, so we'll say yes. Awesome. Now we can get rid of this return OK as well. We can return the model once we call off to it directly. So let's create the code first. So So at the moment we don't have a service class, but we will create that shortly. And we'll also pass in items. So we want to add a parameter up here, and we're going to say inventory items, which is the model we created before, and pass in items. And that's going to pass into our method up here. Okay, so Let's make sure we've got some checks in place. So we'll say if the inventory items, which is passed back here, is null, return not found. And now we can simply, rather than returning OK in the inventory items, which is what we had to pass in previous to 2.1, we can just pass return the inventory items directly. So now we know what model and what type this method is. So what's so good about action result of t? Well there's three options I can think of. The first is slightly less code, so having less code is always a good thing. The method signature now says what the type of the returned object is, and this is really good for anyone reading your code to know what type is being returned. And third, it's really great for auto-generated API documentation. So when you're using something like Swagger, which is now known as Open API, you used to have to decorate the top of your method with the producers, but you don't need to do that anymore. So that's really good to get rid of that. Let's create our service classes. So we'll just create another folder up here called services. going to grab it and make an interface I inventory services and we'll create a class as well reference that I inventory services up there and we'll also head along to start up because we want to make sure that we've bound through dependency injection our inventory services class. So we'll say services dot add singleton and we'll pass in the I inventory services and bind it against the inventory services. So it looks like I've missed the S off inventory services class so I'm just going to rename that so we don't need the services dot inventory service. So now we've got I inventory services and inventory services. Excellent. Heading back to our inventory controller. Now we can call this from the top of our class. So we'll say private read only I inventory services. We'll say services. And we'll initialize that from our constructor. And we'll make sure that we've got the name incorrect. Okay, so now we've got our services, but of course we don't have the method on our service class. So let's create that. Head along to our inventory services, it's saying that we've got a method missing, so we'll implement that method. What we're going to do here is we're going to store items using that post in our controller, 
into an inventory storage device. At the moment, we're not gonna use anything like Entity Framework or anything like that. We're just gonna simply store it in a dictionary. So we're gonna save it as an object so that we can post one or many items to it. And then we're going to add another controller that will allow us to get all those items back. So let's say private, read only, dictionary, the key is going to be string, and we're going to pass the value as the inventory items model that we just created before. And we've got our inventory items. Let's create a constructor, CTOR. We do not want to be passing it in there, so we'll delete that. We're just going to simply new it up. So we're going to say new, dictionary, with the string as the key and inventory items as the value. Okay, so now we've got somewhere where we can store our inventory items. So let's add our items to our dictionary. So we're going to say inventory items dot add. And we're going to say items dot name as the key and we'll just say items. For simplicity on this video, all we're going to do is say return items from our parameter up above. That's not really good practice. We want to be capturing what's happening in here and then returning that. But for now, that will do. Okay, so that's how we can add items to our list. Now let's look at how we can get the items. So we'll head along to back to our controller. And we'll say HTTP get. Going to return an action result. And inside here, we're going to pass, we're going to have a return type of string and inventory items. So you might want to create another model that captures all of this to make it a lot uh, neater and tidy and easy to read. So now we're going to call off to a method on our services class that's going to get our items. So we'll say get inventory items. And we don't have that method at the moment, so that's fine. We'll also put some error catching. So we'll say if inventory items equals op dot count equals zero, return not found. And like before, we can just pass back and return the inventory items which we get from up here. Okay, so let's create our method, get inventory items. Head along to our inventory service. We'll create that method. And this is going to be pretty simple. We're just going to return our dictionary. Just like that. Head back to our controller. It looks like everything has been created. What I've forgotten to add is the routes to each of our methods. So we'll say route get inventory items. And we'll head along to our post. And we'll say route add inventory items. That should do it. So let's save and build our solution. And we'll run it. Now it's running, we'll grab the local host in the port. Head along to Postman. Put that in there. Along with our V1 add inventory items. It's going to be a post. And we're going to pass in the body. And that's going to be JSON. Okay, so we're going to say ID and we're going to have an item name of Weed Eater and a price of 430. So hit send. And we've got a 200 status back and we've got our item back. Let's add one more item before we use the get. So we'll say two lawnmower. And that's going to be 500 in 
$55. Click send. Cool, we've got two back. Now let's get our items. So we're going to grab our port that we grabbed before and we're going to say V1 get items. Okay. Awesome, so now we've got all our items back from our dictionary. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, please remember to hit like and subscribe to my YouTube channel to keep up with all my latest YouTube tutorials.